All right, today we're going to be looking at everybody's favorite topic, adding and subtracting fractions, and this time we're going to throw in some negatives. So, in sixth grade you spent a lot of time developing why adding and subtracting fractions worked and how you got it um, to fit together. Today we're going to go straight to the algorithm, which you learned at the end, to make it efficient. So the first step is that we're going to get a common denominator. We're going to rewrite our equivalent fractions with that new denominator. Second, we'll add or subtract the numerators. Third, you keep that denominator. And four, you always want to simplify your fraction. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples. The first one is this, negative 3 eighths plus negative 11 twelfths. And what I want you to think about is if you were on a number line and you started with zero, if you went to negative 3 eighths, you would go left, and negative 11 twelfths, you would pull further left when you added it. So I want you to think these two fractions are going to combine. They're both going to go in the negative direction. So what I want to do is I'm going to add up 3 eighths plus 11 twelfths but then I'm going to remember that my final answer is negative. So the first thing you want to look for is a common denominator, something that 8 and 12 both go into. Well, 8 doesn't go into 12, but if you keep counting multiples of 12, the next multiple, 24, they both go into. That means 24 makes a good common denominator for both of these fractions. Okay, if you need a little review of changing it in, I'm going to write up in blue here, 3 eighths equals how many 24ths? You want to scale it up. 8 times 3 equals 24, so 3 times 3 equals 9. 3 eighths equals 9 24ths. You can do the same with 11 twelfths. 11 twelfths, when you're making that into 24ths, 12 times 2 is 24, so if you scale up 11 times 2, you get 22 24ths. And then we're going to add these numerators. 9 24ths plus 22 24ths, that's 31 24ths. You keep the denominator the same, add the numerators. And I'm okay with that as a final answer, but a lot of times you might want to write it as a mixed number as well. 24 goes into 31 one whole time. There's 7 left over, so 1 and 7 24ths. The only problem is when we did this, these both moved left. So in our final answer here, when we go back to our original problem, it's negative 1 in 7 24ths, or negative 31 24ths. Either of these I'll accept for full credit. Okay, let's look at a second example. This one's negative 5 6 minus negative 3 halves. When we did that plus minus connection, one thing you noticed is that when you have that minus negative, a lot of people like to change that to negative 5 6 plus 3 halves. Okay, you're going to really have to think about what this look like, looks like on a number line. If you start at 0 and you move negative 5 6 to the left, and then you add 3 halves, that's going to go to the right. 3 halves is more than 5 6, so you're going to end up in the positive zone over here. Your answer will be positive. And notice they aren't going the same direction. So what we're actually figuring out here is where their absolute values, it goes left 5 6 and right 3 halves. Where it ends is the difference of their absolute values. So the easiest way to do this problem is to subtract 3 halves minus 5 6. Again, we need to get a common denominator. So 2 does go into 6, so 6 is a good choice for a common denominator this time. And if we did the same process as before, you want to know 3 halves equals how many sixths. It scales up by multiplying by 3, so do that to the numerator as well. You got 3 halves is 9 sixths. 5 sixths, you don't have to change that. That just is 5 sixths. 9 sixths minus 5 sixths, subtract the numerator, you got 4. Keep the denominator 4 um, six. so you get 4 sixths. Reduce that, divide both the numerator and de denominator by 2. We're going to get an answer of 2 thirds. And you just want to check, is it really positive 2 thirds or is it negative 2 thirds? We noticed on the number line before that we're going to end up in the positives. So this is just positive 2 thirds. Okay, let's do one last example with mixed numbers. 
sometimes this scares people. So we're going to look at negative 5 and 1 fourth plus 2 and 5 eighths. So again, I like you to just kind of think about that number line again. You're going negative 5 and 1 quarter to the left, and then you're coming back 2 and 5 eighths. But 2 and 5 eighths is not bigger than 5 and 1 fourth, so you're going to end up in the negative still. But these are going in opposite directions, so you're going to subtract their absolute values. But remember, you're going to end up in the negatives. So I would set this problem up as 5 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 5 eighths. Okay. I'm going to show you an untraditional way to solve this problem, but I love to do it like this. Uh, it's going to be up to you if you like this or not. First of all, always get your common denominator. 4 goes into 8, so let's use 8 as a common denominator. 4 times 2 is 8, so 1 times 2 is 2. So, one way that you can do this problem if you don't like to borrow, this is the non-borrowing way, is just subtract 2 eighths minus 5 eighths. Well, that's negative 3 eighths. 5 minus 2, that's 3. So our problem is going to look like this, 3 and negative 3 eighths. Well, 3 eighths less than 3 is 2 and 5 eighths. Okay. But again, look, we're not in the um, positives. We're actually in the negatives here. So my answer should be negative 2 and 5 eighths. So that's a non-traditional way to do that. Let's also do it with the traditional borrowing method. So method two will be the borrowing. Okay. So in this case, again, I'm going to set it up. 5 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 5 eighths. I'm going to make them into eighths. So like I did before. And then I'm going to start out with by borrowing. So because 5 eighths is more than 2 eighths, you might want to change 2 eighths. Take 1 away from 5 and make that 4. If you made this 1 and 2 eighths as an improper fraction, that's 10 eighths. Okay, and now we can go straight down. So 10 eighths minus 5 eighths, that's 5 eighths. 4 minus 2 is 2. So we get 2 and 5 eighths again. But again, remember I went 5 and a fourth left and 2 and 5 eighths right, so we ended up in the negatives. So my final answer is negative 2 and 5 eighths. We have the same answer both ways.